Mad Games Tycoon is a game where you make games. It's like those other games where you make games, but it's another one. I started my company and called it Hyper Leo Corp. With a name like that, how could I go wrong? There I was, ready to work, ready to follow my dreams of becoming an indie game developer, making innovative, narrative-driven games that made people cry. Yeah, I'd make it. I decided to get my first employee, Frank Dry. Now there's a name you can trust. Me and Frank just, um, walked around for a bit because I hadn't built them anywhere to, you know, work. So, of course, the first thing I did was build them a bathroom without a toilet. And finally, an office. So it was on to our first game. Fluffy Kittens Are Nice. I had a good feeling about this game. It was our first mark into the indie scene. Of course, all we had was text. No graphics, just text. So you'd have to imagine the fluffy kitten in your mind, which made it all the more powerful. And I think, all the more emotive. We were on to a winner. So we began coding and coding, just tapping away on our keyboards. And then it was done. The game was ready. And with the publisher on board, it was ready to go and sail. But soon the reviews were in. The critics just didn't get it. They didn't get true art, the cretins. But the gamers would get it, wouldn't they? They'd all be flocking at the gates to pick up fluffy kittens are nice. Except they weren't. No, I couldn't even rely on them to buy my game. No. Without even selling 3,000 copies, the game was off the market. My dreams of having a successful, narrative-driven pet game were over. The game had ended up losing us money, which I hear in business is pretty bad. But what could we make next? What would the people want? Sports. It was so simple. People love sports. We would make them a game about sports. No, but it still didn't sell. Then I had to do something that I'd been dreading. Take on contract work. I'm not gonna lie, a little part of me died right there. Instead of creating the world's most innovative games, we were relegated to coding for other people, other companies. I felt a bit sick. But it wasn't just for me, it was for the company. I had to keep going. Soon I started a research section to look into such novel concepts as RPG and scrolling. All for the cause of making better games, so that we could sell more of them and actually, you know, make a profit. But game after game just didn't sell. In fact, our games were getting worse. I had to do something. I took one last gamble. We would create an RPG engine. Not any old RPG engine, no. The ultimate RPG engine. Super RPG engine. Including state-of-the-art technology such as sprites, scrolling, simple artificial intelligence, and save games. If this didn't make us wazzes of money from licensing, nothing would. Yeah, nothing would. Nobody bought the engine. Or Super RPG Engine 2. I did the only thing I could. Make a sports RPG. Golden Gloves. The ultimate boxing simulation. But it didn't turn the tide. Soon enough we were bankrupt. For 13 long years we'd slaved away. But instead of carefully crafting our games, taking our time, we'd spat them out like cheap bubblegum, getting them to market as quickly as we could. Our creative vision had been dulled by years of fear. It was over. It was all over. Hyper Leo Corp was dead. I was a failure. Maybe next time I'd have more luck. Maybe next time.